So welcome. Um, my name is Sharon Epstein. I am a Reading resident. I've been here for a long time. I stopped counting. Um, love it. My husband and I um, live and work in Reading, so it's really our favorite place. Um, my, uh, my business is First Impressions College Consulting, and I specialize in um, college application essays, but really essays um, from prep school through graduate school, and also um, teaching interview skills to um, students and young adults. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my background and then we'll get started. So my background is a little bit eclectic. I have an English degree from Cornell and I uh, have a master's degree in communication from BU. Um, I spent the first part of my professional career actually in television. I started as a television producer um, I produced uh, talk shows, and then I found myself actually as an assistant producer in Brooklyn um, at an NBC facility working for a soap opera called Another World. And that was really where um, I, I got a start in another aspect of my career, which was um, which was script writing for, for television. So uh, my job when I was an assistant producer was to read all the scripts that came through to make sure that um, everything was continuous from day to day. So soap operas are a production line. They put out, at least Another World did, um, an hour a day, um, five days a week, almost, um, al almost nonstop during the year. So somebody had to make sure that what a uh, character knew on day one, they still knew on day two, and they usually did, um, and we caught any mistakes before they went out. But um, I read so many scripts, um, and I saw all the edits on them, and the edits would go from the head writer to the executive producer, um, starting from the script writer, that I decided, hey, I might be able to do this too. So one Christmas break, I went home and I wrote a script, and I showed it to my boss, and um, with help and encouragement, I actually, I eventually was hired to become a scriptwriter. And I wrote for three different shows. Um, I started at Another World and I moved to Guiding Light and I also wrote for All My Children. Um, so that was my um, television career. I actually had a brief stop working for Martha Stewart and then I um, and then I changed course. And so what I decided I wanted to do was to take what I knew how to do and loved, which is writing and communication skills and turn it into what I do now. So I um, started my business. I um, made connections with college admissions officers. I started um, lecture series with the college admissions officers where we would go and talk to groups and I would talk about writing and they would talk about what it was like to read the essay. So um, yeah, I still keep up with admissions officers and now I've had over 15 years of experience writing, helping students write essays um, that they're proud of. And I think that one of the things I'll say before we talk about the process of writing is for me, how important it is that when a student writes the essay, that it really does come from them, that it really reflects something that matters to them, that they care about, um, and that is written in their voice, really reflects something that they would like the schools and the colleges to know about them, and that they're proud of having written, and it really feels like it reflects them. And I just feel like in my work, and I think essays um, overall, that that really should be the goal. Um, of this of this essay. So today we're doing the ABCs of writing great college application essays. And um, wait, did I miss one? This is what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to talk about the, there's different types of essays. There's common application essay, which is 650 words max. Um, Sharon, I think you, you yes. Yeah, you I'm better. Okay, sorry, we'll go back. No, I cannot go back. 
There we go. All right. So, um, so there's different types of application essays. So there's a common application essay, which we're going to talk about today. There are essays for schools that don't accept the common application essay. And um, what we're talking about today can absolutely apply to that. There are supplemental essays, which uh, some colleges require in addition to the main common application essay. And um, currently on the common application, there's an optional COVID-19 essay. And if anybody wants to know about that, I'm happy to talk to them, to you guys about it as well. So this is my little frustrated guy. So he's here because a lot of times um, when students are, you know, thinking about this or what they've heard, or they're not quite sure what they've heard, what they've discussed, this is how they feel. Um, but, um, but we're here to, you know, at, by the end, make sure that you don't feel in that way. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, four things, what colleges look for in an application essay. We're going to talk about ways you can brainstorm essays. We're going to talk about some writing techniques that work to make an interesting essay. And we're going to talk um, a little bit about why this school essays, which are one of the types of supplemental essays. So if we have time, we'll definitely talk about that. So let's get started with talking about what, what do colleges look for in a common application essay, right? So it's not just an exercise in writing a fun thing, these essays have a job to do. So, so when a college um, admissions officer is looking um, at your essay, what are they looking for? Well, they want to know that you can write well, right? They want to know that you can organize your ideas, that you can um, convey them um, in a way that's interesting to read. They want to get a sense of your personality and who you are through this essay. Um, and then they want to know something about what matters to you and why, right? Something that you care about. And we'll be talking more about that and kind of how you can find that. Um, they want to see that you not only talk about like what it is that you care about, but this piece about why. They want you to be able to reflect on this experience or this story that you've told them so that they understand through it what you've learned or how you've grown or if you see the world in a, a different way or have new goals. So reflection is really important to the essay. And they're also looking for this by reading your story, by getting a sense of who you are, what your great qualities are, something that matters to you, what you care about, or something that's happened to you in your life that's helped you grow, or given you a new perspective, they get to understand Will you be a positive member of this community, right? Of this college? Will you be a good fit for them? And so that's what the essay does. It's really giving them a chance to get to know you in a way the rest of the application hasn't. And that gives them a sense of what you will be like and who you will be like when you get to school and help them make that decision. So a lot of students come to me and say, great, but I have no idea where to begin. I don't even know where to start. And nothing's ever happened to me that's important enough to write about. I think that I've, students are told that they have to have something big that's happened to them. Um, and they say, I don't have a death in the family. I don't have anything major. I don't have a catastrophe. So all of that's okay because you don't have to have a big story to write a really exceptional essay. And so we're going to talk about where you begin. So where you can begin is by brainstorming. Actually, some of the most important parts of writing a common application essay isn't by putting it on the page. It's what happens before. It's that thought process. It's mulling it over and thinking about your experiences, talking them through, or finding someone who's a good ear um, or even talking them through to yourself and decide. So we're gonna talk about brainstorming. So brainstorming begins by self-reflection. It begins by turning inward and saying, who am I and what do I care about? And what matters to me? And the thing is, this is kind of an odd thing to do because most of us aren't asked on a daily basis, well, who are you and what do you care about? 
I mean, if someone came up to me and said, hi, how are you? I wouldn't say, hi, I'm fine. I'm Sharon and I'm a kind, compassionate person. How are you today? So we're not asked to really kind of look inward and examine ourselves, but this is what the essay asks us to do. And so we have to start that process. So one of the things to start with really is to say, what do I love? What excites me? What matters to me? It can be anything. It can be space exploration. It can be the thing that lives under the rock in your backyard. It can be the fact that you can't wait for tomorrow because you're gonna teach yourself a new piece on the guitar. It, it, there's no right answer to this. The only thing right about it is that it matters to you. And then you can think about, well, what are my best qualities, right? So, um, so for that, I have, I have a sheet, and this is just an example of types of positive qualities. Now, when we look on the sheet, we see how many qualities there can be, right? Acceptance, adventure, art, balance, hope, kindness, knowledge, patience, passion, being open-minded. There are many, many different positive qualities. And so one of the things that I ask my students to do, and I consider it actually one of the most important questions I ask them, is I ask them to choose four or five positive qualities that they exhibit. And then once they've written that down, I ask them to write down a time or an experience where they've exhibited that positive quality. So for instance, if they write down empathy, right? when was a time that you exhibited empathy? What did you do and, and how did that happen? Or if you were resourceful, how did you exhibit that quality? And when you start to do that, when you start to pair the, the qualities that you feel are important to you with a time that you've demonstrated them, sometimes that can become the experience you write about, or at least it starts you to be able to help to think in that direction. When you're thinking about what can I write about, I think that it's so important that we see in life the small things. So a lot of us, again, think I don't have to, I can't because I, I don't have anything big to write about. So what you're missing is that everyday life is full of small things. But we go through life in such a fast way that we don't stop often to really recognize that something's happened or we had a conversation with somebody that might be meaningful or we did something that, that might've made a difference to us or to somebody else. And so when you stop for a second, and you start to say, what did I do today? What did I hear? Who did I talk to? What did we talk about? And then you start to see the small things and those two could even become something that you write about. Take stock of your hobbies and quirks. So when you're brainstorming, it's not just the big pieces that, you know, I love this in academics or, you know, I really wanna make a difference in people's lives. That absolutely can be something you write about. But for some people, right, they have hobbies that are interesting or even quirks. I had a student who wrote about the fact that he sweat too much. I had a student who wrote about trying to learn to whistle, right? And that became an essay about perseverance and determination. I had a student, I said, what can't you do? And she said, well, I really would like to learn to juggle, but I can only juggle two balls. And so her essay became about juggling, but the two balls and what those balls were. And then she talked about if she added a third ball to her life, what she would like to add in. And so she used that as a metaphor to talk about three things in her life that was important. So taking stock of things that you might not think are things that might make an essay could be really interesting as well. We say, try a slice of life. You know, this, this has to do with um, this has to do with you know something that might happen um, in a day, in a moment, in an afternoon that you might um, that you might not think about, 
what you should pay attention to. Um, think about your day. For instance, if you came down every Sunday and had breakfast with your mom, if you go out in the afternoon and play catch with your brother because you know, no one's home yet, um, if you're taking care of your sister in the afternoon um, because you know your mom works, um, these are small, these are not small things, but they're slices of life. Um, and so you want to start to think about um, what do I do and how do I do it and who do I do it with and what might be meaningful about that moment. And then this is a great one. Don't stop at your first idea or the easy answer because you might have an okay idea for the first thing that comes to mind. But if you take the time to keep thinking, great, think when you're walking the dog, think when you're taking a shower, um, then you might find that you have a better idea or something that really starts to be able to illustrate you in a way that you think is even better. So don't just stop at the easy answer, keep going. And when you're writing and when you're brainstorming, you always want to ask yourself why. So let's say you come up with an idea, right? Let's say it's, I really want to be um, an, a space engineer, right? I wanna work for NASA and I wanna work for the space program and I'm gonna write my essay about that. That's great. But then you need to start to ask yourself, why? Why do you wanna do it? Well, I wanna do it because it's going to be an interesting profession. Well, why? Well, because I've always, always enjoyed engineering and I've always enjoyed paying attention to my heroes who are astronauts. Well, why? And so as a college admissions officer um, said while he was um, doing his part of the lecture when we were talking, he said, you want to continue asking yourself why until you cannot answer that question anymore. Why did you think that way? Why did you make that decision? Why do you care about that? And the more you ask that question, the more it forces you to reflect and find the insight and the depth to who you are. And then you put yourself on the page and the college admissions officer gets to meet the real you. And so asking yourself why is really important. So here we come and a lot of these things you'll see, they, they all relate to each other. They're all about how do you choose a moment? How do you choose an experience? So we've talked about, we've talked about choosing something that might be a slice of life. We've talked about looking at the small things. We talked about, um, you know, asking yourself why. And here, what it says, choose a moment or experience that stands out to you and write about why it was meaningful. If you can do that, that's where it becomes original. That's where it becomes something that only you can write. And that's what you're looking for. So when you're brainstorming and when you're thinking of the moments in your life that stand out, right, whether they're big or whether it's small, if you can write about it and then be able to let someone know why this matters to you and why it was meaningful to you, that's something that no one else is going to be able to write. And that's where it becomes your essay. So out of that, the one thing I want to say right now is that as you're thinking about what to write about, one thing that's a potential problem is having a story that's too big to fit in the space that you have. So common application essay is max 650 words. You cannot upload more than 650. And within this essay, as we've been talking about, you need to talk, express who you are. You need to tell a story. You need to talk about why something's meaningful to you, what you've learned from this experience. If you choose a story that starts when you're in kindergarten and ends now and encompasses so many things, you're gonna end up in trouble. You're not gonna have enough space. So when you're considering what to write, just really, really be aware 
that you want to make sure that the size and the scope of your story is manageable. And then if you have a, do have a big story to tell, that you find a way to tell it so that you can tell it really well. Does anybody have any questions about brainstorming? Let me know because otherwise we're going to move on. So the last thing I'll say about brainstorming is, and this is a picture of a backpack, and we talked about being original, that you should be able to write an essay and it should be able to fall out of your backpack without your name on it. And someone who knows you should be able to pick it up and return it to you knowing that you wrote it. So that's definitely a way to double check. Is my story here? Am I here? Is my personality here? Will someone get to know me and who I am through what I've written? Okay, so let's talk about the common application essay prompts, right? So I don't, we don't start with the essay prompts. We really just start with what is this essay about? What do you have to think about? Because really it's finding who you are and writing about that that matters and using the common application essay prompts as your inspiration. So if you don't know the common application, right, is an application you fill out once and you are able to submit that to as many schools that you're applying to that accept it. And the common application has one major essay on it and that's called the common application essay. Sometimes the common application personal statement. There are seven prompts to choose from and you have to choose one and I'm gonna go through and read them. And this is for 2021 and for 2022 for students who will be applying um, in the next cycle, um, you will, the, the uh, questions will probably be out January, February, you'll be able to check them and make sure that, um, that the question, you know, what the questions are. Sometimes they're the same and sometimes they change, but for students that are applying this cycle, these are the questions. Okay, so the first, so the first question is, nope. Some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful, they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, then please share your story, right? If there's something that they don't, that we don't know about you, that if we didn't know about this about you, we wouldn't truly know, know you, this is a place for you to answer that question. The second question is the lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success. Recount a time when you faced a challenge, setback or failure. How did it affect you? And what did you learn from the experience? So this is a question, right? About, about how, you, how you manage an obstacle or a challenge. For a question like this, it's really not about the problem, but it's about how you approach your solution. How did, you, how did it affect you? And what did you learn from the experience? And we talked about reflecting on your essay and here it's included in the question when it says, what did you learn from the experience? And a question like this is a question to answer. Um, if, you have, if you have an example like this, it shows a character building experience. So the third prompt is reflect on the time when you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. What prompted your thinking and what was the outcome? So this could be anything in terms of a belief or idea. It could be something that someone taught you, something that you always thought was true, something that you decided was true when you're a little kid and you don't think that way anymore. And so this is really about thought process. What prompted your thinking? What did you believe? What was the outcome? So really get a chance to kind of be internal and, and, show, um, and show the college admissions officers you know, how you think. Number four says, reflect on something that someone has done for you that has made you happy or thankful in a surprising way. How has this gratitude affected or motivated you? So this question is new for this year, for 2021. And um, Common Application wanted to be able to include something where students could, um, could exhibit gratitude and talk about that. 
One, um, one thing to note is that it should not be an essay about someone else. It's really reflecting on something that someone has done for you. So again, you have that reflection. How has this gratitude affected or motivated you, right? Has it inspired you to do something because of it? The fifth prompt is discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. So I always kind of laugh at this because accomplishment, event, or realization is pretty much anything. Um, accomplishment, you know, something you did, event, something you took part in, or realization, right? So that's, you know, that's an idea or a thought, something that happens, right, between your ears um, that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. For instance, I worked with a student who, um, who had, who was a gymnast and had an injury and she was really devastated by that injury that she couldn't compete anymore. But what she did do was she started, um, well, she started volunteering for, um, for students who were, you know, had learning and other challenges and she became a coach and she learned um, uh, about herself that she was a person who could inspire others um, and how much and how much more meaningful that had become to her. So that's the kind of answer that would go in this um, in number five. Number six is describe a topic, idea, or concept. Again, almost anything you find so engaging it makes you lose all track of time. Why does it captivate you? And what or who do you turn to when you want to learn more? Right. So what really absorbs you? Right? What do you love? What matters to you? Why does it captivate you? But you have to see that the last, um, that the last sentence says, what or who do you turn to when you want to learn more? So we see it's not just a question about what do you love or what captivates you, but it's also a question about discovery and your journey of curiosity. And how do you find out more? How do you go about doing that? And then finally, Share an essay on any topic of your choice. It can be one you've already written, one that responds to a different prompt or one of your own design. So what the common application is telling you is we want to inspire you to write a story, but if one of the six questions or prompts we've given you, um, if you write an essay and it doesn't fit into one of those categories, that's fine you can include it in number seven, as long as it does the job that it needs to do. So those are the common application prompts. And again, you choose one um, to answer. Okay, so we're gonna move on to writing techniques that work, right? So you've looked at the common application prompts, you've done some brainstorming, um, you think you've come up with a story, at least one that you would like to start to write. So how do you do this? Or how do you make this interesting? Well, the first thing that you have to do is you have to make sure that anything that you write sounds like you. It needs to be in your own voice. Um, and what do we think, what do we, what do we um, say or what do I say? So that should sound like a conversation. Um, it should sound like a conversation that you're having, you know, between you and an adult, um, not too casual, and definitely not too formal. This is not your English or history paper. This is not an argument that you're making to try and persuade someone in the third person. This is you writing and as, as your voice, as if you're talking to somebody. And when you're writing and you're talking to somebody, you use I a lot, right? And also, um, and also you are not so formal. So usually people, when they're writing, um, when we're speaking in conversations, don't use therefore and additionally and first and foremost. So if you find yourself starting to write in a way it's kind of more reminiscent of, a, of your high school essays, then you want to pull back and think, is, does this sound like me? Does this sound like my voice? You want to be able to start your essay in a way that's interesting, right? In a way that grabs the reader's attention. And by that, what I mean is that you not only want to start in a way that sounds interesting, but it makes the reader want to continue reading. So how do you do that, right? So I like to say, I like to give students three ways to start an essay in an interesting way. 
Um, and so the first way that you could start an essay is with a question. So here's an example. Why did I quit the football team? Well, if I was reading, I might say, I would like to know why you quit the football team. And then your reader gets to read on. And, and the second way is to start with a statement, but not just any statement. You wanna start with something intriguing, an intriguing statement. So let me give you an example, right? I have to admit I'm a wimp, right? Okay, well, that's interesting, but I don't know everything yet, so I'm going to read on. And a third way, right? So you have a question, a statement, and a third way is to start with the action in your story. So let's say you've decided to write about, um, let's say you've decided to write about being in uh, an intern in an ER. We have an example, I have an example coming up. Um, and so last summer you went to, we had, had a student and he went to Seattle uh, where his brother was working and he interned in an ER. And so, um, and so, he, uh, and so he wanted to write his essay and he didn't know where to start. So where he, so he started with this. He started with last summer, I interned at a hospital in Seattle. So that's how he started his essay. But as he, as he wrote his essay, um, he started to talk about what happened in the ER. And what he started to write about was the bloody gurney that was wheeled past him and how he practically fainted and passed out. And what, what I told him was, that's where you need to start your essay. You need to start with the action in your essay, right? So before he would, he said, last summer I interned at a hospital in Seattle, right? but when he found where the action begins, right, where something was happening, he changed it to the bloody gurney wheel past me, right? And I prayed for the strength not to pass out. So if you have a story and it has action in the story, Look for the place that action starts and see if you can start there. And that often is the most interesting place to start. So those are three ways to write a great introduction, right? A question, a statement, and starting with the action in your story. Another writing technique that works is using sensory detail. Right? So we all know about details like who, what, when, where, you know, you have to establish um, what's going on in your story. But then there is sensory detail. And what's really important to understand when you're writing your essay is that your reader is blind. The only way your reader can see what's happening in your story is for you to show them. You are the reader's eyes and ears and knows you are that person, right? So if you think about a fairy tale and you think about like Little Red Riding Hood and her, when you think about Little Red Riding Hood, maybe you think about her red cape and the basket that she's holding. And maybe you think about her trotting down that path in the dark woods. Well, the dark woods and the red cape, right? And how she moves down the path, that's all sensory detail. If you didn't have that picture painted for you by the writer, you wouldn't be able to have that image in your mind. And so that's what your job is as well. You have to have that, you know, give the reader the image you want to give them. And you do that by using sensory detail, how something smells, how something tastes, what it looks like, what it sounds like, and what it feels like. So if you're writing an essay and you're writing your story, one thing that you can do is just to close your eyes and pretend that you are wherever you, wherever that story is, that you are back in that moment and you want to hear what's going on. You want to see what's going on. If you're in a kitchen or you're baking, you're smelling what's going on. If you're sitting on a couch and you're comfortable or uncomfortable, right? you're feeling what's going on. And so you wanna be able to convey that 
to the reader. It's comfortable, it's uncomfortable, it's loud, it's soft. There's a hum, whatever it is. So you wanna choose some adjectives or adverbs that will really help the reader experience your world. So what I wanna do now, unless anybody has questions, is I actually wanna read a sample essay. This was a student of mine, and this is a really solid essay that um, shows a lot of the things that I've been talking about. So we can see some of this in action. I, Sarah, I cannot see my entire screen. I see people, but I can't see my entire screen. I think if you change your view, let's see. Um, what do you have for your view right now? I I think I'll try and make it work. Rather than rather than deal with the technology, I will, I'm going to try and make this work. So let's okay. see if I, can, if I can read this, okay? Okay. All right. So the Audubon Sanctuary Nature Camp opened the gates to the world of science. I would spend hours by the pond using metal strainers to catch macroinvertebrates such as dragonfly larvae. When I wasn't at Audubon, I hiked the woods behind my house, mapping every last inch and claiming it in my name using forts composed of stray branches and fallen logs. I constantly brought home trophies from my expeditions. Wait, done. I started in the wrong place, I'm so sorry. All right, one of my favorite stories about, this is the first paragraph. One of my favorite stories about me involves a mole, a dead one to be precise. According to my mother, I had so ever carefully placed it on a stone slab and marched it up to her bedroom to proudly show her what I'd found. Unfortunately, she wasn't very pleased with me. Her frustration was understandable, but could you blame me? I was an excited, curious kid who wanted to show off what had been the coolest thing I'd ever seen. This was about the time my parents signed me up for Nature Camp. The Audubon Sanctuary Nature Camp opened the world gates to the world of science. I would spend hours by the pond using metal strainers to catch macroinvertebrates such as dragonfly larvae. When I wasn't at Audubon, I hiked the woods behind my house, mapping every last inch and claiming it in my name using forts composed of stray branches and fallen logs. I constantly brought home trophies for my expeditions, interesting bugs, giant chunks of quartz and old, old bones, old enough that you could see teeth imprints left by mice seeking extra calcium for their diets. Unfortunately, just like the mole, my mother wasn't a fan of my bone collection and banned them from the house forever. Over time, I transitioned from being taught to doing the teaching. This didn't mean that there wasn't more to learn though. By asking questions, I learned how to sort the pond macroinvertebrates into predator and prey categories and how to make some pretty decent owl calls. I even picked up survival skills like starting fires and pitching tents. One of my happiest summer memories took place during a warm August day at Audubon. So warm in fact that a heat warning prevented us from taking campers outside. CITs on the other hand were fair game. Another counselor and I trekked down a giant hill under the boiling sun to fill heavy tubs of water with pond insects. Then juggling the containers of sharp tooth animals, we began our Herculean voyage back uphill. When we returned, I taught the campers about how pond organisms interact with each other and how the whole pond would change should one disappear and why protecting these habitats is more important than it seems. As I've gotten older, my passion for the environment has expanded to cover habitats other than the terrestrial ones I've never hesitated to explore. As a kid, I loved ponds, but the idea that something as big as the ocean had only been 5% explored terrified me. I didn't even like wading in shallow water for fear of sharks. This past summer, I pushed myself backwards off a dive boat into the Indian Ocean, embarking on my first scuba dive. As soon as I submerged, I was in an entirely different world. No matter which direction I turned, lionfish and lobsters surrounded me. There was something so special about being entirely immersed in nature without coming up for air. And it felt like where, where I was meant to be. 
My love for science and the great unknown is what changed everything. Even though I was afraid, I wanted to explore the unexplored. Over time, my fear has transformed into fascination and I spend as much time in the ocean as possible. I'm getting scuba certified in March so I can assist marine-based organizations such as the Coral Restoration Foundation, which grows and transplants coral. From an overexcited child presenting her mother with a deceased mole to a young adult passing on her knowledge of the environment to the next generation, my life has revolved around nature. As the ponds I explored grew into oceans, I grew as well as my horizons broadened and my perspective expanded. Going forward, the courage and curiosity that brought me to where I am today will continue to shape my path to the future. So when we go back to the beginning, we see that she starts with a statement. One of my favorite stories about me involves a mole. Intriguing to say the least. She hasn't told us everything and we wanna read on. So she's done a really good job there. And then she tells a story and, um, and she has a sense of humor, a dry, very dry sense of humor. I think she does a, a pretty good job. She does a very good job showing that. Um, she does a really good job with the sensory detail that we talked about. Every, you know, the woods and the, and the ocean are wonderful ways to be able to really get into detail. And she talks about that interesting bugs and bones old enough that you can see the teeth imprints left by mice seeking extra calcium for their diets. And so that's a great detail, right? But I wanna show you something else about that detail. Um, when she says teeth imprints left by mice seeking extra calcium for their diets, it's not just a detail, but she's showing us that she knows something. She's not afraid to say, hey, I know stuff. And I'm going to let you know that, you know, I, I have a background in this. And she does that really nicely. And, you know, not by bragging, but just by letting us see her story. Her story does take place over time. So it's a bigger story, but she does find a way of finding the highlights in her story. And she talks about what it's like to teach and how she grows through that. And then she talks about how now she has gone from this kid who was afraid to be in the water to really challenging herself and growing into that space where she has grown because of what she loves. And so when we think about, we go back to, you know, what do colleges look for? Can, can, you, know, can you write? Can you get a sense of this person's personality? Do we have a sense of what matters to her? Yes, and why? Absolutely. She reflects on it and she tells us how she's grown through it. And can the admissions officer through this then get a sense of who she might be or what kind of positive impact she can make at school? And the answer is absolutely. So, so this is a story only she can tell. This is her personal journey. And by writing it and writing it honestly, and not being afraid to be vulnerable and showing how she gets through it, she's written a really lovely essay. So I think that's a really good essay to show some of these examples. So, so to recap, right, absolutely, paint a picture for your reader. Don't forget that, you know, to make an essay interesting and to let them understand, you wanna, you, you wanna be able to do that. You want to show how you think and make decisions, you know, show what's happening right between your ears. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable, right? Absolutely, you know, um, show parts of yourself or try to show parts of yourself that maybe seem a little uncomfortable. At least try to put it on the page and see what happens. And of course, reflect on your experience. Let the reader know why you've told them this, what you've learned from it or why it matters to you. And there are a few don'ts. Um, you don't want to do anything to make your reader uncomfortable. That might be too much information. It might be certain, um, certain situations. So you just want to, you want to avoid that. You, never, you, you want to be really aware of who might be reading your essay and, 
And that really could be anybody. It could be someone who just graduated from school. It could be someone who, you know, is a grandparent. There's a great, um, there's a great spectrum of people who might be reading your essays. So you want to keep that in mind. Don't write about something that doesn't put you in a positive light and don't write about anything that's illegal. And while some people chuckle at that, I've had more than one student tell me things like they picked up their friends because their friends needed a ride. But in truth, they weren't able to pick up their friends because they only had, you know, like their learner's permit. So there are things you really have to kind of consider when you're writing your essay. You just have to make sure that you're not going to raise any of those red flags. And then, you know, a lot of people say, don't write about winning the big game. Um, and no, you don't want to write about winning the big game. But some students say, well, that means I can't write about sports at all. And that's not true. Because if you find your story through sports, something that's meaningful to you, a way that you've been a leader or helped someone, lots of ways, um, you certainly can write about sports. Finally, do proofread, um, you know, look it over. Don't rely on spell check. Um, Sacred Heart University will tell you that they get lots of, that they, they get essays saying how people would love to go to Scared Heart University because spell check missed that. Um, and it's really good idea to have other sets of eyes to help you proofread your essay so someone can look for punctuation and grammar and make sure that it's all buttoned up for you. Does anybody have any questions? And um, if you do, great. If not, um, I can talk a little bit about why the school essays. All right, I will continue. So I want to talk about why the school essays because um, you know this is a type of supplemental essay that um, most students are going to get. Um, interestingly, um, some of these essays are 100 words, and some of these essays can be up to 800 words. So there is a huge spectrum, but there are some things that are important to know about why the school essays, and I think if you have some of these tools under your belt, you know, you'll be able to approach them in a really successful way. So first, I want to say pay attention to the prompt. Um, just because you, you know, some, some, some schools will say, you know, why do you want to, you know, pursue your major? Some schools say, you know, why do you want to go to this school? Some schools want to know, you know, all encompassing, you know, why you want to go there. And if you just in your head think, oh, they just want to know why, then you may be answering a question they haven't asked. So pay attention to the prompt. And the second thing is do your research. This is really key because you have to know about the school in order to be able to write this essay. Um, and when we talk about doing your research, there's lots of ways to do research. Um, first, you wanna go to the website and you want to, you want to read through. Now, some schools have huge, huge, huge websites, so I'm not talking about that. But what you want to do is first on their homepage, you want to look and see what they have. Um, you want to look and see, you know, homepage for schools is like their, their advertising page. It's the, and so they're going to put on that page things that matter to them. They're probably going to have links to, um, to you know, where you're going to live and the type of student life you have and academics. And they also may have certain keywords that you can pay attention to, types of students that they're looking for. Are they curious? Are they engaged? Are they people who want to change the world? Or types of opportunities a school has to offer. You can go to their about page or read their mission statement um, to see really what that school is all about. A lot of um, websites might have videos of students who talk about not only why they're there, but what they love about being there. And so that's a great way to understand um, once you get there, like what life is going to be like. Um, you, if, you check, if you check out a school's Instagram feed, you can see potentially like what's happening, what programs they have, what's coming up tomorrow, what traditions they have. And so if you do your research, take a virtual tour or 
um, you're able to really start to get a sense of who they are. Um, and by doing that, you get to get a sense of why you are a good fit for them. So what do schools wanna know in these Why the School essays? Schools wanna know that you get them, that you understand something about them, why they are different from this other school down the road, from the next school and the next school. What do they offer that's special? And then they wanna know that you're a good match, right? That, you, that you've thought about how you'll fit in and how you'll contribute. In other words, why does their school matter to you? So, one th so here's a couple of things that, that are good to know in terms of not to do and what to do. So when you're writing a Why the School essay, you don't wanna regurgitate the information that you found, right? You don't wanna restate facts such as your school offers 60 majors and over a hundred clubs. They know that, right? They're not here to, for you to tell them what they already know. What they want to know is, um, they, what they want to know is how you'll fit in. They don't, want, as they don't want an essay that's vague or impersonal, like your school really inspires me. I like cold weather. The campus is amazing, right? So you don't wanna restate facts and you don't wanna be vague or really write something that's impersonal. Again, if you think about the backpack, this essay should be able to drop out of your backpack. It should be able to be read and belong to no one else but you. And so here we, here we have, so I have some examples. So this first example is a restating the fact. I like Bowdoin College because it's a highly acclaimed school with excellent academics. I especially like Bowdoin because it's close to the Canadian border. So those are all facts that you can get off the website, but it has nothing to do with why it's a good fit for that student. So the new version is Bowdoin's proximity to Canada is important to me because my family is French Canadian. I'm excited to be able to immerse myself in the premier liberal arts education while being close enough to Quebec to learn more about my heritage and practice my language skills. So that's personal. Right? That takes the facts and it tells the school why that's important. They get to learn about the student. They understand why it's a great fit. We have another example, right? So your school really inspires me. The students are friendly and the campus amazing. I can really see myself going there. That's going to get completely lost in any pile. It's not going to stand out. But here's one that stands out. I introduce myself to some of the students who are on their way to Dr. Gruber's psych class. As we walked across the quad, they told me how exciting his lectures were and how much they liked him as a teacher. My high school psych course has made me want to learn more about psychology. And if I admitted the first class I'm signing up for is Dr. Gruber's. So here we learn about something about the student and we learn about why the student you know, would be a good fit and that he envisions himself on campus. And so he's done so much of the work for the admissions officer already by saying, hey, you can see me there. This is how I'm going to be. Okay, so, um, so that's a brief overview of why of the Why This School essays and getting started on those. And if you want some resources for um, common application essays, um, Connecticut College and Hamilton um, both have portals for essays that worked. I will say that they put their premier essays online. So just remember that you are reading them not to say, this is what I need to do or to be competitive, but to see what other students are doing and be inspired. And Common Application also is a great resource. So thank you. So this is me. And if you have any questions, you know, you're welcome to ask now or you're or welcome to email me.